looking at we're only looking at the financial center. Two three of us, two broken windows. September 11, 2001 was a day of national tragedy and individual misery for countless people. Multiple criminal acts took place that day which resulted in a massive increase in defense spending, a costly global war on terrorism, the creation of new federal agencies like the Department of Homeland Security and TSA, and the quick passage of the Patriot Act which gave law enforcement agencies sweeping search and surveillance powers over U.S. citizens without a warrant. This video was produced in honor of those whose lives were taken and whose loved ones have had to live with the sad devastation of losing friends and family. And to those thousands more who to this day have had the quality of their lives diminished because of the conditions they were subjected to that day as they attempted to rescue those in trouble. And as difficult as it may be for some of you to believe the facts stated in this video, each statement is supported in the source links that are listed in the description below. Please take the time to do your own research and draw your own conclusions. According to the General Accounting Office, over $60 million was allocated to investigate the Whitewater land deal, the Monica Lewinsky scandal, and other issues involving the indiscretions of Bill Clinton. But a mere $15 million was the most officials could muster to investigate the highest profile mass murder on American soil the world has ever seen. On 9-11, after the first plane hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center, people in the South Tower wanted to leave but were advised by Port Authority announcements to stay at their desks. Some of those who tried to leave anyway were turned back by security just before exiting the building. 1,120 people died in that tower. While looking for survivors at Ground Zero, rescue workers and their dogs tirelessly searched through the wreckage for weeks. Every now and then, firefighters would hide in the rubble so the dogs could find, quote, survivors. Constantly finding dead bodies was noticeably leading to high stress in the dogs, and it appeared that they thought they were failing in their mission. Jamaican-American-born artist and sculptor Michael Richards cast his body and depicted it as being pierced by airplanes as a tribute to the Tuskegee Airmen. The planes, he said, represent arrows that were shot at St. Sebastian, an early Christian martyr. Ironically, Richard died in his studio, which was on the 92nd floor of Tower 1 on September 11th. The Project for the New American Century, or PNAC, formed in 1997, was a neoconservative think tank based in Washington, D.C. that focused on United States foreign policy. PNAC's stated goal was to, quote, promote American global leadership. Of the 25 people who signed PNAC's founding statement of principles, 10 went on to serve in George W. Bush's administration. In September of 2000, exactly one year before the 9-11 catastrophe, PNAC launched its most influential publication, a 90-page report entitled Rebuilding America's Defenses, which asserts that the United States should, quote, seek to preserve and extend its position of global leadership by maintaining the preeminence of U.S. military forces. They state that they need to exploit the revolution that is transforming technology and bring it into the military in order to, quote, preserve American military preeminence in the coming decades. In their minds, what will speed such a transformation? Their answer, quote, some catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. One year later, such a catalyzing event presented itself with 9-11, later referred to by Bush and his cabinet as a modern-day Pearl Harbor. A small group of women called the Jersey Girls, who lost their husbands in the 9-11 attack, basically forced the Bush administration through public pressure to form a 9-11 commission which was reluctantly charged with preparing, quote, a full and complete account of the circumstances surrounding the September 11th attacks. Their account turned out to be not so full and complete. The commission, now known to many as the 9-11 Omission Report, left out many obvious facts, including the fact that a third building in the World Trade Center complex completely collapsed that day, and it wasn't even struck by an airplane. Described as being damaged in the attack, which started fires on several floors, the 47-story steel frame federal office building known as World Trade Center 7 collapsed in six and a half seconds at 5.20 p.m. 
more than seven hours after the second Trade Center tower fell. And speaking of Building 7, the BBC conducted a live report in which reporter Jane Stanley announced that World Trade 7 had collapsed. There was just one small problem with the report. Building 7 was still standing in the background as Stanley was reporting that it wasn't standing. Matter of fact, Building 7 wouldn't collapse until 20 minutes after the report of its collapse. This is the Windsor Hotel in Madrid, Spain. On February 12, 2005, a fire broke out on the 21st floor of this steel-framed 32-story building. The fire blazed for 23 hours, gutting large portions of the building. And while some of the floors crumbled away in the flames, the steel structure's skeleton remained standing. In comparison, the South Tower burned for a mere 56 minutes on far fewer floors before it completely collapsed. And the North Tower burned on relatively few floors for only 102 minutes before it experienced complete structural failure. Building 7, which wasn't even hit by a plane, only burned for 6 or 7 hours. So to recap, the Windsor Hotel burns for 23 hours on many floors and remains standing. World Trades 1 and 2 burn for less than 2 hours and yet experience global symmetric freefall collapse. World Trade 7, by the way, was the largest CIA headquarters outside of Langley, Virginia, and housed offices involved in several large-scale federal investigations into massive stock market and accounting fraud. Building 7 was the first to be cleaned up, and the evidence destroyed at Ground Zero. On July 24, 2001, just 49 days before the 9-11 attack, a guy named Larry Silverstein from Silverstein Properties put up $14 million of his own money to secure a $3.1 billion bid and acquired a 99-year lease on the World Trade Center from the Port Authority of New York. Despite not being the owner of the buildings, Larry was the sole beneficiary of the insurance indemnity payments of more than $7 billion for acts of terrorism. After a long legal battle with the insurance companies who covered the policy on the Trade Center complex, the court awarded Silverstein $4.55 billion. The Freedom Tower, also known as One World Trade Center, currently the third tallest man-made structure in the world, is the main building in the New World Trade Center complex. Standing 1,776 feet tall, the skyscraper cost $3.9 billion to construct. Silverstein's insurance settlement contributed $1 billion to the project, the state of New York provided an additional $250 million, and the Port Authority agreed to give $1 billion, which would be obtained through the sale of bonds. The rest, as was suggested, could be collected through increasing New York City tolls. At 9.03 a.m. on September 11, 2001, it's alleged that Flight 175 crashed into the South Tower of the World Trade Center. At 9.06, Chief of Staff Andrew Card informs the President, quote, a second plane hit the other tower and America is under attack, end quote. At that same time, in other parts of the country, Vice President Dick Cheney, Condoleezza Rice, and several congressional leaders were rushed to secure locations. But not the President. The President's Secret Service detail, whose protocol it is in this situation to see the President as a high-value target with a well-publicized location that must be moved, in unprecedented fashion did nothing to whisk the President of the United States away from that school into a secure location. The official report records that Bush remained at that school for another 20 minutes after learning about the attack on America. Number one is coming up. And if you enjoyed this content, click that red subscribe button for more interesting videos. Speaking at a town hall meeting in Orlando, Florida, President Bush was asked by a child how he felt when he heard about the terrorist attack. Bush's response was extremely interesting. Recounting the events of that day from his perspective, he said that he saw the first plane hit the tower on a television that was, quote, obviously on as he sat outside a classroom at Booker Elementary School in Sarasota, Florida. The problem is that no one could have seen the footage of the first plane hitting the tower since there was no known live coverage of the first plane. There was no live coverage of the event because nobody expected an attack. The footage that was taken allegedly of Flight 11 striking the North Tower was captured by Jules Naudet and his French film crew at 8.46 that morning 
and would not be released to news outlets until a day after the attacks. The president's incredible statement that he saw the first aerial assault was another important item that was omitted by the 9-11 Commission report. If you enjoyed this video and you think others could benefit by viewing it, click that like button and share it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you want to see more videos like this, as well as a mix of other content, give that subscribe button a click. For more information and additional content, let's connect on Facebook at facebook.com slash highimpactflicks and reach out to me on Twitter at highimpactflicks. Until next time, remember, it's easier to deceive the masses than to convince them that they've been deceived.